So I'm going to show you now how we can create our first Lewis application. Before we actually create the app, we need to create a Lewis or language understanding resource from the Azure portal. Um, the purpose of the resource is to purely provide us an API key later uh, that we can use in conjunction with the application to uh, programmatically call the HTTP endpoint, which will be the result. So um, the location of picked West US, um, now, it's important in terms of the region that we pick because that will need to pair up with the app application later. So you just got to make sure those two match. In terms of the tier, the, the free tier uh, for the demo is fine. It allows five calls per second, 10,000 calls per month. That's that's more than enough. And that's it. So once we've picked our resource group, we'll create. And that's all we need to do for the resource for now. So we'll, we'll come back to that when we need to retrieve our API key. So on the Lewis homepage, lewis.ai, we need to log in. Um, it seemed to be separate in terms of the account, so you may need to, to create an account if you can't simply log in with your um, existing uh, Microsoft ID. Okay. So we're going to create an app that is going to be focused on the music domain. So when you think of like Siri or Alexa, uh, and the types of commands that you can throw at those devices to be able to understand things within the music domain. That's what this application is going to you know, aspire to, to kind of do the same type of functionality. So you can see here in terms of the app assets, we've got the intents and entities that I mentioned in the key concepts video um, and the phrase lists as well. What we're going to do first though is now that we've created our app, um, Lewis has, allows us to kick off with pre-built domains, so kind of like a starting point. So if we search for music and we add that, even though we, the intents and entities was completely empty and bare before we had a vanilla application, adding the music pre-built domain will populate, um, populate our application with, with some content. So if we can jump back to entities and intents once this is this complete, so we're just waiting for the, uh, the button to change. Uh, we can train our app based on all the pre-built content. So this allows us to get started really quickly and to demo um, so, some of Lewis's capabilities. Okay, so I've fast forwarded the video there, but um, just be conscious that that process can take about a minute before this button pops up. Once uh, the pre-built domain has been added, if we go back to intents, you can see now we have a whole bunch of intents. Um, increased volume, repeat, play music, pause, resume, and each in 10, if we drill into like play music, is linked uh, to a whole bunch of utterances. Um, so we've got play, Augustana, playlist, and Augustana has been labeled with the entity of artist name. And if we jump to entities, we can see that we have two being genre and the artist. So now that we have some content, uh, we can go ahead and click train. Okay. So we've populated our Lewis app with all the pre-built content. We've trained um, the application. Uh, we can test um, the app already at this point. So play um, some song by some artist. If we inspect the test, uh, we can see that it's predicted that the utterance is related to the play music intent, uh, but it hasn't been really good at um, pulling out the artist um, at this point. So we may need to provide a more information to improve the accuracy, but we'll get to that a bit later. Um, while I'm able to test the current edited version, we haven't uh, published this to either production or a staging environment. So to publish the app, we, we go up to this screen. You have two slots available. All of that means is that you have the option to publish to two different HTTP endpoints, which is useful if you want to uh, test on you know new changes on one and leave the production one obviously in a stable state. In terms of the two options around including all predicted intent scores and the enabling the Bing spell checker, so all predicted intent scores that just if you watch the HTTP endpoint, if I check that, it adds this verbose equals true. So it means for a certain utterance, uh, Lewis is going to come back and return every single possible intent that it thinks it's predicted. Uh, accompanied with all the scores and you know sorted in the order of most confident to least um, but if I, I'm going to leave that blank for now because I don't I just want the most confident 
intent and, and disregard all the rest. The second one with the Bing spell checker, if you um, that's a separate resource in the Azure portal, but if you create that and, and bind the spell checker, you can see if I check that, um, you've got this bit in the, your endpoint that, where you can add a Bing key. Uh, it can auto-correct spelling mistakes in utterances. So if you are quite confident with the type of language that people may be using um, and that it may trip up if they're smelling like errors within the, the input, um, enabling the Bing spell checker may increase the accuracy of the uh, the result, I guess, reduced from, from Lewis. So that's all we need to do to publish. So we'll publish to our production slot. You can see at the bottom, while that's publishing, we've got this uh, the resource keys. Each Lewis app has the starter key, so that's by default. It's limited in terms of its primary, primary purpose is for authoring, like as we're, as we're doing now. But to... Uh, query uh, the endpoint um, at decent volumes you that's where you need to go back to Azure portal and we can do this now um, for the, the lowest resource that we recently created grab the API key so we'll copy that and we'll oh, sorry we didn't even need a copy and paste so it's actually got the wizard where we can just select the tenant select the subscription and it automatically picks that we've got Lewis and only because the region, North America region, matches up with the West US region that we specified in the resource, we can add that key. Uh, and that allows us to, you're hitting that endpoint with that key um, at a higher volume, so whatever the limits were. And then if you need to go higher than that, then you'd upgrade from the free tier to, to the, um, uh, the paid. Okay. So we can test um, our app already if we just copy the link address straight into our browser. You can see at the end of the queue, there's um, it allows us to um, enter a query straight in the URL. So we can say play Billy Jean by Michael Jackson, and there's a result. So while we are able to obviously test this within the browser, you'd more than likely uh, do this programmatically, um, you know, using Python or C Sharp. Uh, so you can see we successfully predicted the intent, which is to play music, and even who the artist is being Michael Jackson. Um, okay. So if we visualize the relationships, we have an application called Music. We have intents, many intents, like repeat, stop, play, mute, and others. Under the play music intent, we have a number of utterances like play me a blue song, play Elysium please, play Augustana. And within each of those utterances, there are potential entities that are being flagged. Now you can see that not all utterances need to have an entity, but um, you can have zero or more entities within a single utterance. So that's it. Um, we've now created our first app. Um, in the next video, I'll show how you can enhance the application by creating a, a new entity. So we're, we're missing song name. So we're going to um, add a new entity called song name and how we can train Lewis to become more accurate and confident in being able to derive entities by feeding it um, more examples so that it can establish patterns.